create the color swatches project in which we'll have some sliders that the user can move and create the different colors of red, green, blue values. And there are actually 16.7 million different shades of colors. But as we move the sliders, it's going to reflect the color and also show us the hexadecimal value of these RGB values. So this is it running in the in an iPhone emulator. Here is an Android emulator of the S of the Samsung S20. And this is actually phase one of the project be, because over on the right hand side, later on, we're going to create a list or a collection view of all of the named colors that Microsoft offers in .NET MAUI. And we can select a named color and see the RGB values, see the color swatch, and see the hexadecimal value. And then we'll add a label for the named color as well. So that's the second phase. In this phase one, a couple challenges is restrict the orientation to landscape. I'd like you to add Arial Black font in. And remember the font name must be lowercase for Android. You may need to put a, an underscore to an Arial Black. So you're going to add a new XAML content page named Color Swatch. That'll give you a color swatch .xaml to color swatch .xaml .cs. And then I'd like you to try to replicate the code here. And a couple tips here. We have a vertical stack layout that has the title going across and then everything else is in a second item which consists of a horizontal stack layout with a vertical stack layout for the sliders and the corresponding labels and then another vertical stack layout for the, for the swatch. And I used a border view for that and then a label that shows the hexadecimal value. On the C sharp code, you will code the value changing for the sliders and have that then reflect the swatch made up of those three sliders and the hexadecimal value. I suggest you pause here, try this yourself, you get stuck. What follows is my solution, my code review. I'm going to start by creating a new project in Visual Studio 2022 on the Windows side. We want a .NET MAUI app. I'm going to call this one. color swatches. And we'll make this a .NET 7 project. And the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that this is a landscape oriented app. So I'm going to go into the platforms. Let's start with Android. I'm going to go to the main activity.cs file. Open that. And then inside the public class main activity, I'm going to add in an overriding of the onCreate method and request the orientation be landscape. I'll go ahead and close that file. I'm going to save it. Let's go into the iOS platform. I'm going to go to the info.p list. I'm going to uncheck the portrait and the upside down. So I'm left with landscape left and landscape right. And again, on the Mac side, these are just going to be enums inside of a list. And I'll close that file. Say yes to saving the changes. Next, I'm going to add in some fonts to my project. I'm going to go to the resources folder, open that up, right click on the fonts folder and choose add existing item. And if you recall, I had a folder I named Maui fonts with some fonts that I copied from the control panel. I need to look at all files and I'm going to add in the Arial Black. In fact, I think I'm going to add in all four of these. Click Add. And then we want to make sure that the build action is MAUI font on each of these. Windows does a great job of setting that automatically. On the Mac side, I think you have to manually set the build action to MAUI font. Next, we're going to add in a new page. Rather than using the main page, we'll add a page called Color Swatch. I'm going to right click on Color Swatches, choose Add, New Item. I'm going to choose .NET MAUI and we're going to add a XAML content page. And I'm just going to name that Color Swatch. And now I have a Color Swatch XAML and a Color Swatch XAML.cs. Here is the boilerplate code for our colorswatch.xaml. It's just a vertical stack with a label. It says, welcome to .NET MAUI. 
and then our C sharp code behind is just the constructor initializing the components at this point. If I were to run my program, however, we wouldn't see those. We'd still see the main page because that's what's scheduled to, for our startup. So to change that, we're going to go into the app.xaml.cs file. And there we have main page equals new app shell. We're going to change that to new color swatch. I like to test along the way. So I'm going to choose an emulator of Pixel 5, and let's run it. There's a the splash screen. I'll show you how to change that down the road, something a little more personal. Now notice it's forcing it into a landscape mode, and so everything is running uh, basically horizontally within the emulator. I can rotate the emulator and get a better view of it. So there's our label inside this vertical stack view. It just says, welcome to .NET MAUI. I'm gonna end the emulator. And so now we're ready to go in and make some changes to our color swatch XAML and our color swatch XAML.cs. The first item in our vertical stack layout, and get rid of this label, I want to add another label, but with a border around it. So I embed the label inside a border peg, and I'm going to give that border a thickness of five. You can accept the color to purple, get a width request of 500, height request of 50, horizontal center, and then here's our closing border tag, but in, nested in that is our label, which is gonna say RGB color swatch. Font size will be title, text color purple. Here's where I'm gonna use that Arial black. Now I probably need to change this to lowercase because that's how it's registered in the resources. And then vertical options center, horizontal center, and font attributes bold. So that's gonna be at the top of of my vertical stack, that's item number one. And then below that is we're gonna have a horizontal stack with two vertical stacks. But let's just test this portion. And there is our title inside the border. Okay, so let's add our horizontal stack. Inside the horizontal stack, I'm going to create a vertical stack. So here's my vertical stack. I'm going to give it a name of VSL, so vertical stack layout left, and the width request 310, and my vertical option center. I'm going to give it some spacing um, for all the objects inside that vertical stack, along with a little bit of padding. Let's do our closing vertical stack. Inside that vertical stack is I want three sliders. One for red, one for green, and one for blue. Here's my first slider. I'm gonna put it inside a horizontal stack because I also want a label to the right of it. So here's my slider inside a horizontal stack, spacing of 10, get a little spacing in between the items. I named the slider slider red with a range from zero to 255. Give it a background color of red. I'm gonna give the value all the way to the right at 255 and a width request to 256, since we wanna include the zero. And that means one unit for each element on the slider. Makes it really easy. I want the thumb color to be white, height request 20. And I'm gonna set a method here for value change to called set color. Then I wanna to label to the right of that that is LBL red value. I'm going to put the text of 255, so that's my value for the slider. Set the font size to medium, font attributes bold, and I'm going to color it red for the text. So before I can test it, I need to create this set color method in the C sharp. For now, all I'm going to do is create the stub for that. Because it doesn't necessarily need to do anything to test the user interface. And my event args is going to be a value changed event args. Like so I'll just create some stubs here. Okay, so now going back to my XAML, I'm just going to test this in the emulator. So 
So there's my slider. It's a little close to the left edge for me, so I want to fix that. And I have the padding set on the vertical stack layout to five all the way around. I'm going to change that to give a little more padding on the left. And we'll say 20 comma five comma five comma five. Since I've had hot reload going, I just go back to my emulator and you'll see it's actually moved it over a little bit to the right. That looks much better. Now the horizontal stack layout contains the slider and the label. That's my red slider. I want to duplicate that for the green and the blue. So I'm just going to copy that horizontal stack layout, paste it. Let's change the name to slider green. I'll make the background color green. Same minimum, maximum. I'm going to set the value here though to zero rather than 255. And then for the label, let's name that LBL green value. Let's set the text to zero. That's our initial placement of the slider. And let's change the color to green. And then I basically want to do the same thing for the blue slider. So let's set the name to slider blue. Set the color for the background to blue. I'm going to set this value also to zero. So we're going to start with our swatch being red. So in the label, let's make that text color, make that text zero. Change the text color to blue. And let's change the name here of L to LBO blue value. And these are all three sliders are using the same value changed method of set color. So we're gonna do anything in C sharp at this point. So have hot reload going. So let's just go over our emulator and there you can see the swatches. I like to bring these down so they're more center. So what I can do again on the on the padding for the vertical stack layout, let's maybe make this 50. And that brings that down considerably. It's not necessarily centered, but it, it looks good as far as the placement. Now I do think I can bring the padding on the left over a bit more. We've got plenty of room. So we'll do 40. And that looks better. Now I want to add in our color swatch and then also a label below it to show the RGB hexadecimal value of the chosen color. I've got a bunch of spaces in here. I'm going to get rid of those. So we had a vertical stack layout that contained our three horizontal stack layouts. To the right of that, I'm going to add another vertical stack layout to contain our swatch and our label. So I added a vertical stack layout, horizontal option center, vertical option center, margin 0, 15 for the top, 0 on the other values. I'm going to use a border for my swatch. I could use a box view, could use a shape. But a border works really well here because it does have a background color and a stroke color and we can change the background color. The border I named border swatch. Set the background color to red so it matches or is aligned with our sliders being red all the way to the right and green and blue all the way to the left. Stroke is black. Stroke thickness five. With request I made 250 by 250 and a padding of five. And then I want a label below that that's going to be named LBL hex color. Font size large, font text is bold, with request 250, horizontal text line is center. I'm going to set the text to hashtag FF0000. That is the hexadecimal code for pure red. Let's jump over to our simulator. Now it's encroaching a little bit here on my labels. Now there's a couple ways we can fix this. We could increase the margin for our vertical stack layout on the left to push it further to the right. But I think a better solution is come up here to this vertical stack layout where we have all of our sliders in and adjust the width request from 310. Let's make it say 360. Now I noticed that the, bo the border swatch seemed a little bit large. So I'm going to adjust that width request and height request down to 200. And then also change the width request of our label to 200. Let's jump over to our emulator. And that now looks much better. Now we have a bunch of space over here on the right hand side. We're going to add something to this down the road of listing all the named colors that we can select and see the swatch for that named color and see what the RGB value and hex value is for that color. So this is sort of phase one of our RGB color swatch. Now 
Nothing works at this point, so we need to go into our C sharp code behind. And we need to set the code for set color. We'll start by determining which slider the user clicked. And I want to get the value of that slider. Since it's a double value, I'm convert it to an integer, put an integer variable called v. Then I want to figure out which slider they're using. So if, if the target.background is colors.red, they click the red slider or move to the red slider, I'm going to set LBL red value to v. If they move the green slider, I'll set the LBL green value to v. Otherwise, we'll set the blue value to v. I have a method here called update swatch that's going to change the color of that swatch. So what I do need to do is add a another method here. We'll just call it update swatch. And then I just need to write the code for that. So I'm going to take the LBO red value dot text and convert it to an int 32. And that's because from when I'm getting the color from RGB, it's looking for in 32 values. So I want to convert the value of the red label, the text red label, to an in 32 named R, one for the green to G, and the blue value to B. Then I take border swatch dot background color equals color dot from RGB, and I pass it those red, green, blue values. Then I want to update the hex value. LBL hex color dot text. I'm going to start with a hashtag. I'm going to concatenate to that the R value converted to string in a format of X2. That is the hexadecimal two digit. Do the same for the green and the same for the blue and need a semicolon at the end. And so now hopefully our sliders are functional. So because I've added some, some other methods here, update swatch, and added more code into set color. I think I probably need to not rely on the hot reload and simply end the simulator running and then restart it. And now as I move the sliders, I'm getting the swatch changing colors and also reflecting the red, green, blue values as hexadecimal. And that completes phase one of the RGB color swatch project. If you just jumped into this video, you can see all the videos from the .NET My Practicum playlist by clicking on the image in the lower right. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos I create, you can click my picture in the top right to subscribe to the channel.